What's up, guys? It's Coach Grant with First Down Training, and today we're going to be talking about three tips for smaller wide receivers to be successful, okay? So now we're going to be talking about three different scenarios here in a lot of situations that small wide receivers are placed in that they should normally have a disadvantage, but this is how you can gain an advantage. So first thing we're going to be talking about today is not forcing your press releases. So this is going to be a corner route versus outside shade press. So this is a situation a lot of shorter guys out of the slot are faced with. So how would you go about this route? But before we break this down, fellas, we are going to be traveling out to six more states this offseason for two-day-long quarterback and wide receiver training camp. So if you guys are local to the Atlanta, Georgia area, Columbus, Ohio, Chicago, Illinois, Dallas, Texas, Nashville, Tennessee, or Los Angeles, California, and like to get some work in with myself and my staff of coaches for two whole days, check out that very first link in the description below, you guys. We are limiting spots at these camps to only 10 to 12 guys per position group per age group. So it's going to be a lot of work for you guys. It's not one of those camps where we're just running you through drills and not even coaching. We're actually going to coach you and we're actually going to teach you for four hours on each of these days. We're going to have DBs out there for the receivers to work one-on-ones, half-line concepts, and the work. So check out that very first link in the description below, fellas. We'd love to have you out to one of our off-season camps. Let's get back to this video. So now, first router, like I said, this is a corner route versus an outside shape press DB. So especially out of the slot, whenever you see man coverage and that um, guy who's lined up on you, DB who's lined up in press, has safety help, you'll see an outside shade coverage. Because what do slot receivers like to run a lot of? They like to run a lot of outside breaking routes. We like to run a lot of out routes. We like to run a lot of corner routes, right? So anytime that they're in press, they might be expecting that based on the wide receiver's alignment, right? So he's in the slot, so they might be expecting that. So you'll see outside shade press. Now, the thing that you have to understand is that with an outside breaking route as a smaller guy, we cannot try to force what I'm doing. A lot of wide receivers think that, oh, I have to run an outside breaking route and I can out route or a corner route. I got to take the outside release. Now, as a smaller dude, if you try to force it, especially against a bigger guy, he is going to not knock you completely off the route just because he's bigger than you and he's going to be a little bit more physical than us, right? So we have to take what he gives me. So he's giving you the inside release right now. Let's take the inside release and trust myself at the top of the route. As a shorter dude, the details are very important. When you're going up against guys who are bigger, stronger, faster, the details, emphasizing the details are important. So what this receiver goes with is a split release, right? So he gives a little split, a little hesitation outside. All we got to do is get this DB to keep his leverage. Just get him to hesitate for a second and I can take the inside release. Because if I could take the inside release, I stay on my path, right? So when I stay on my path, that like AKA red line, as a lot of people call it, which is essentially just like the straight line that's going up the middle, um, that can give the quarterback space to lead you open. Because I'm hoping that as a smaller guy, we obviously have a little bit of speed to my game, a little bit of explosion. So if I can just get a step or two on this guy, that quarterback can throw me open. So make sure number one thing, fellas, that we do not force the release as a shorter guy. Take what the DB gives you. He could use something like a wide step release. He could maybe attack attack him and do like a like a triple step release to the outside. Anything to hold this DB's leverage and take what he gives you to the inside. Okay, let's play this thing full speed one more time. Great job hitting this move. One other thing though, fellas, like obviously our goal is to restack, give him a move and then accelerate. But what if this DB plays it well and he's hip to hip with me? We could always use that throw by. We could always swat him by at the back of his hip and cut under him. Just got to make sure that you have a plan for when you do this. I'll play this thing again one more time. Great job using that split, holding that DB's leverage to the outside, giving him the move at the top and then having that space for that quarterback to throw him open because we did not force the release. Now, second thing that short wide receivers need to understand is they need to have um, a high football IQ and make their routes look the exact same. So I've seen it happen time and time again. We're going to play this route. This is like a stop route, but it's going to be like a stutter go stop. Okay, so let's play this thing one more time. So he stutters, bursts up, snaps this thing down, is able to come back to the ball. So again, shorter wide receiver against a bigger guy. And I've seen this time and time again, especially when I work with my guys, because a lot of guys that I train, right, we were in California, and a lot of them are in high school, right? Because a ton of high school athletes down here. And sometimes we'll have sessions where we'll have like a college DB out there, for example, or I'll have a DB who, you know, is committed to whatever school, Pac-12 school, whatever it is. And you always see it. The shorter, smaller guys don't get that. That much separation when they come off the route with some basic moves and they're doing basic principle routes. That's why you have to have different tools in your arsenal because when you're facing a talented DB who's faster, bigger, stronger than you, it's great work. Don't get me wrong, but don't expect to get any separation if you don't bring anything extra to the table. You have to be calculated with your movements and have to make them look the same. Okay, so now what we decide to do here is we decide to work this little stutter go, right? So he bursts up, gives a little stutter with his hips. He drops his hips. The details matter, fellas, like we were talking about. He gives a little hip drop that gets the DB's feet to stop and then he bursts up fast. He goes 100, 0, 100, stop. 
that's how we have to think of this route specifically. Now, again, there are a million different moves that you can use. There are a million different tips that I could give you in terms of route running and how to make your routes build, but you have to make sure as a shorter guy, you are bringing something extra to the table against those more talented, more physical, and bigger DBs. Because again, if we could just threaten them with speed, I could threaten them by making my routes look the same. I could be a salesman with my routes that can get me separation, right? So that means selling vertical. That means having a good pad level, being in full stride, not slowing down before the break. Those little details are what matter, fellas. If you're lucky enough to be able to play at the next level, everybody is, there are some freak athletes, obviously, but I say, and I say this lightly, but there, everybody's just about the same, you know, athletic ability when it comes to receivers and DBs, right? There's not a whole lot. There's like tenths of seconds separating guys on 40 yard dash times. Not like in high school where you're a good receiver. You can just outrun everybody or you're just bigger than everybody, right? There's it, everybody's the same just about. So the technique is what matters. Scheme matters, obviously, like you got to be in a good offense but making your routes build off of each other that's what matters this looks like at some point this looks like a five yard hitch at some point this looks like a hitch and go and then obviously it turns into a stop route make your routes build off of each other that's the best advice i could give you as a smaller wide receiver to be less predictable let's watch the thing again full speed one more time great job stuttering getting the db's feet to stop selling fade and then putting the brakes right on right now so now Last tip for wide receivers. Like I said, if you are going to be on the smaller side, you need to make sure that we have some kind of explosion to my game and some kind of quickness, some kind of quick twitch. Okay, so a lot of wide receivers, um, they ask me like, hey, well, what if I'm short and what if I'm slow? You, you, that's just, it's not going to fly at the next level. And I'm going to be completely real with everybody. Like, that's just not going to work. You can't be short and you can't be slow. Like, if you're going to be short, you got to be fast. Like, if, you, if, you're, if you're on the slower side of things, like, and again, like, slow for a wide receiver is maybe like like a 4 7 40 4 8 40 i would say and the 40 time exactly doesn't matter but i'm just saying like for example but you got to be on the taller side you have to be on the bigger side you got to have great hands you got to be able to create separation i'm not saying it's not possible but as a shorter guy you got to bring some quickness to it so the third tip that i can give you guys is for is you need to have explosive cuts because you need to be able to get up into your routes with some explosion and some burst to put this db on the defensive so we're looking at a wide step release right here so this wide Wide step release normally is with like his right foot in this case, it would be with his outside foot, but because his stance is switched, which is for timing, he does this wide step with the inside foot. So let's watch the thing full speed. So he does a great wide step release and you see how explosive that step is off the line. That step right there is explosive because he's able to bring his hip with the foot. So if you guys want more explosive cuts, you have to get used to, as I like to call it, throwing your hip into a break. So when this receiver goes with this wide step release here, you see how he's stepping outside the DB's frame, right? We talk about that a lot. If you're familiar with this page, you probably heard me say, hey, treat releases like you're driving. You've got the far left lane, the DB's in the middle lane, and then you have the right lane, which is where we want to get into. To move the DB off the platform, we actually have to step to this left lane. But if I just step to that left lane and I don't bring my hip and I don't throw my upper body with the cut, I don't have any explosion and I'm going to be slow and off balance. If his body stayed over here, he'd have no explosion off of this leg and he's going to get jammed. Especially as a smaller guy, we need to have some explosion and we need to have some twitch to my movement. So how do I get that? So when he comes off the line, his feet are a little bit cut off here, but you could tell. Watch what he does. He takes a little kick step with the back foot. That kick step allows him to shoot his hips wide because when your feet are a little bit narrow like that, you get more of an explosion. You get more of a throw with your hip. Not saying that's the most important thing in the world, but that certainly helps. You don't want your base to be super wide because it's really hard to throw your hip in that move. Movement. So, fellas, make sure as a shorter guy, undersized receiver, you have to make sure that you are throwing your hip with your cuts. Bring your hip with the cut so that foot is in a balanced position underneath your frame so I could push off of it and get some more explosion. Think of it like this. like uh, Think of it like a boxer, for example. A boxer, when he's in tight and he's throwing punches, his feet are not super wide. He does not have a super wide base, right? His feet are underneath his frame because he's trying to rotate his hips and get as much pop on the punch as he can. Same thing with us. We're trying to get as much drive off of the cut as we can, but we also want to sell it, right? We also want to sell the route. So this cut has to be inside of my frame, but stepping outside of his frame. So me bringing my body and attaching my hip to my foot, aka attaching my hip to my foot, like I say, that is what will get you out of there fast with some explosion and with some twitch, which is very beneficial for shorter wide receivers. Let's watch the thing again, full speed one more time. Great job using that wide step release, and you see how much that's able to move the DB off the platform, and we could create some separation on that route. All right, fellas, I really want to thank you for watching. If you're on the smaller side, I... um. 
I really appreciate you guys watching and I hope this helped you guys out. I know a lot of people have been asking about this kind of thing. So um, I really appreciate it. Um, so if you have any questions, any kind of video feedback, don't hesitate to leave that in the comment section below. And again, fellas, traveling out to six states across the US, check out that very first link in the description below. We'd absolutely love to have you out to one of our two day camps, four hours each day, limited spots. So you're going to get a ton of reps and a ton of coaching. Check out that very first link in the description below. I'll see you guys next time.